Hi, and welcome to another Razorback screencast. In the last episode, we looked at the flywheel housing, and we added some really cool detail to it. Um, right now, the model has no textures because I turned that off in the options menu of the camera. So we can toggle that on and off. I think it's useful to have it turned off right now since we're doing uh, so much modeling. I like to model in sort of a monochrome setting. So I thought it would be really cool to look at the batteries. Up until now, they've just been these two cuboid sort of objects. But battery terminals can actually look pretty cool. I have some images here that I just searched on Google for different battery terminals. And you've got the traditional looking sort of heavy ones like these, or you have the more varied set of battery terminals. And I think it would be cool to do some of these types, these copper types right here. Uh, something like this. Um, sort of having a pair of heavy bolts coming out the top of the battery that those bolt onto. So let's see what that looks like. I guess since they're going to be the same, we should just model one to start with. So we can select this battery object here and find it in our object manager. The scroll to first active. It'll show us what we have selected. And it's an instance. So this is the original up front. So let's just work on the original. To get some stuff out of our way, let's see if we can hide, we're already hiding the blades. So in addition to hiding the blades, let's see if we can hide the arms. Lovely. So now we can sort of get in here and look at the battery. So I think we should start with a cylinder. It's usually my favorite object to start with. You can do a lot of different things if you start with a cylinder. And we're going to scale it down. And using the transfer tool, we're just going to select the battery and transfer the cylinder to the battery. So now it's right where we need it at the precise angle. Probably change the cylinder's properties so that it points on the Z axis. So now it's facing the right way. So let's start by figuring how large this bolt is going to be that comes out of the battery. I want it to be large and menacing, but not ridiculously large. So I think something around that size is probably good. So typically cylinders have, I think, 30 sides in Cinema 4D. That's going to be a bit too many, 36 actually. I want something closer to 12 or 16. I'm going to go with 16 for this one. Let's see how that goes. So 16 still gives us a nice round battery pole, but it's going to give us the opportunity to morph this into a sort of cube shape as it comes out of the battery and then it turns into a cylindrical pole, which is kind of what I want. So the next step is that we convert this to an editable object select all the points, and we optimize them. That way we get a full solid object instead of a cylindrical sort of toilet paper tube shape with two caps on the end. And once we have that, we can select all the points on the bottom, just bring them up a little bit. So we want about that much pole. The rest of it we want to turn into a cube and put it down into the surface. So Let's see how we can do that. If we select the polygons down there and then scale them up while copying the polygons, we can try to convert this shape into a rectangle. Now the easiest way to do that is probably going to be to hide the unselected polygons. So you can just hide unselected. Now we just have the disk and we can see how we can change this. So the easiest way I'm seeing is to sort of identify these corners.
and scale them up. Oh, I don't have the same corners selected. I need all three points. So we can scale it out until it gets a little bit square. Scale it up until it gets a little square. And then we can deselect the points that are already kind of square looking. Scale it up. Scale it out. We're sort of morphing our circle into a square. And once we get to this point, we can start to get creative and then we can just select all these points Scale it down, holding Shift, 0%. Select these points, scale it down, holding Shift, 0%. And just repeat that for all four sides. We're just flattening out any variations that might be present. Once we've got that done, we can actually select the three points in the middle for each of these. We can probably select all of them at the same time. No, we can't. We have to do them pairwise. So the left and right sides first. And we scale them out like that. We can even snap it so we know how much. So quantize to 210%. And then we can select these and do the same 210%. And now that we have our square shape, we're just going to select the corners, scale them all in a little bit to give a rounded corner. So what we've basically done is turn the cylinder into a square and now we can unhide all of our polygons and we have a square shape morphs into a cylindrical shape, kind of like I envisioned. So now we can extrude that down into the battery and we can probably do some adjustments. For instance, it's probably not going to be perfectly square. So we can just grow the selection and then scale it so it's a bit rectangular. Then Using our loop selection, we can select this base loop and this cap loop right here. And we can bevel them. And just like that, we have something that kind of looks like a battery pole. Let's bevel the top here as well. So this is going to be like the end of a bolt. And there's going to be this sort of fat pole coming out of the battery at the top and of course like all good DC batteries we're gonna have a pair of poles so we can just create an instance move it down to the other side and as soon as we make these two objects here which I'll just rename pole As soon as we put these inside of the actual battery object, it gets duplicated to the second one because it is an instance. So the next step is to get some heavy duty cabling and to run that along them. Now, to create the sort of battery uh, connector, we can use a similar technique in that we just model it once and then have it replicate on all the batteries. So starting with this pole object, I will create another cylinder. And we can use the transfer tool again to move it to the pole. Now this cylinder, I probably only want 12 segments, not 16. And to start, we just kind of want it off to the side like this. Maybe the cable can be a little bit fatter. Start about that. Now again, we can just convert it to an editable object. Select all, optimize, and then 
we can start extruding. So in this case, what we want to do, we're going to use the Live Selection tool, only visible elements, select the cap, and then we can just control drag to extrude once, a second time, but this time we're going to widen it. And before we extrude again, we want to make this a square. So again, we're going to go from a circle to a square. So what I'll do is I'll just hide the pole so that we can see this properly. And we're pretty much going to use the same technique. So this time I'll do it a little bit quicker. I'll just select these four edges. Same thing here. And we don't have the same uniform number of edges like we did when we had 16. So we have to get a little creative here. And we're going to create a bevel on the fly. Like that. So now we have the same thing except the edges are pre-beveled for us. Good stuff. We could even probably stretch that out a little bit. So now we can flatten it like the battery terminal bits are. And we can now extrude it. So if we unhide the pole, it gives us a better idea of where we are. So we can slide that back. So once it's extruded to about that much, we can extrude it one more time to sort of cap it off. We can scale it down a little bit that way. And for this piece here, I don't like these converging points. So I'm just going to delete all those edges. We can do that by doing the melt command. It turns it into one big end gone. Then we can use the line, the, the knife tool in line mode to do visible cuts. And we can just cut across, then down. Cross one more time, down there too. So what this is going to allow us to do is get much more clean geometry. And we can now grab this edge, pull it forward. And we have this sort of curving tip of the battery terminal. Select just these vertical edges for a second. What we can do is scale it so that those become a little bit more correct. And let's do the same thing here. Make it not completely flat. And we have this fat piece of metal now for our terminal. Now we might want to move the pole up a little bit because the connector needs to go all the way down. That's how it's going to connect. And then just to smooth out this transition, what we can do here is use the brush tool, smooth mode, and I'm gonna, yeah, strength of 10% is okay. So we can just click and drag and we can smooth it out a little bit just so the transition is a little more gentle. Then I would probably do a bevel right here. No subdivisions though. So you get that. You can even select those edges and the edges we were just messing with. And use the brush tool on all of those and just sort of smooth them out a little bit. Give more organic look to that piece of steel. Well, copper or brass. So now we have a terminal. Now if we wanted to be really slick about it, we would put a hole in the middle of this terminal. So let's try that. Even though we may not see it, if you do, things like that are usually appreciated. So we are going to create yet another cylinder. I'm going to 
transfer it to the terminal. And that's oriented on its z-axis. Let's start with eight segments on rotation. Move it into place. Now, this is one of those cases where I'm going to use the evil boolean object, just because it might be easier. But as I've covered in other videos, there are easy ways to use the boolean, and then there are hard ways. So let's just create a bool object, put both of these inside of it. We want to subtract the cylinder from this other cylinder. Now it does not look good. Let's see how we can improve this. For one, we can make it intersect less edges. So let's see how we do this. If we were to focus on these points right here, and move them up a little bit, all of a sudden, it looks a little bit better. So the other thing we can do is play with the number of edges. So this is kind of important. If we select this polygon and this polygon, and then switch to edge mode, deselect the edge in the middle, it gives us a really good idea of how many edges we have here. So we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Which means if we give our cylinder here six sides, it could actually work out to be a perfect boolean. So let's give it six sides and then rotate it into place and we can see that we can actually get quadrangles all the way around. But at this point I'm thinking to myself, is all of this work worth it for something that's just going to have six sides? And I'm thinking probably not. So let's move it back up to eight All we need to do is select our cylinder and the knife tool in loop mode and we just need to give it two more edges right there. Now we can go to edge mode and we can deselect the edges in the center so we just have the ones around the edge and we have eight edges. Cylinder has eight sides. That means this boolean is going to be a pretty perfect boolean once we clean it up. So let's say hide new edges, create single object, and convert it to an editable object. So what we're left with is a new object that has a few extra points as you can see, but it should be pretty easy to clean up. So we just select those two points, weld them, Select those two points, weld them, and we just go around doing that. It may seem like a bit of extra work, but we do have a good looking boolean. And when we're done, we should have eight points around the top and eight points around the bottom. So I'm going to hide the pole so we can see the bottom part and we can see if we just grab all those points and weld them same thing here we just keep going around the cylinder doing that we should have our eight points and some well-formed geometry pretty soon now just to verify we can use the loop selection to select. We have eight points there. Eight points there. So that was a lot of work for a little hole in the middle of the terminal, but we can kind of make it worthwhile by beveling those edges. Oh, we have to remember to triangulate these. So by default, these may not be triangulated correctly. 
So what I like to do is select them, melt the edges, and then just draw my own edges with the knife tool. So if I draw one down to there, and there, those are our quads that we like so much. Do the same thing on top. Man, this knife tool is such a good modeling aid. Okay, so now we have those. We can actually just select these two loops of edges and do a really quick bevel. Maybe too much. That's more like it. So now we have our terminal with our hole in the middle. Modeled really quickly. So let's just call this uh, connector. And let's unhide the pole. So now we have one connector. Let's move its axis down to the center. We have one connector. We could rotate it a little bit to the left. And instead of putting it as a child of the pole, which would just create copies like that, I want some variety. So I'm going to put it as a sibling of the pole. And then we can create a new instance. and transfer it to the other pole and then rotate it. So the next step will be to create cables that come off of these terminals and find their way down into the bowels of the motorcycle, probably through this nice gap right here. But I think this is enough for this video. So until next time, see ya.